Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about all things workbook C. Uh, workbook C is typically used in schools in Ireland in third class. Um, outside of Ireland, that would be children that are aged maybe eight, nine years old. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into workbook C. Um, typically, teachers using workbook C will have moved on to the individualized aspect of spellings for me. But the most important thing for you to realize is Every workbook comes with a checklist. So A to F come with checklist. For the for workbook C, this is what the checklist looks like. It's about four pages back to back, eight, nine pages, A4. If you follow this checklist step by step, you'll find it hard to go wrong in relation to running the program. So it's really important if it's your first year using Spellings for Me, I would urge you to print this document and follow it step by step. It is really the only document you need to print. Um, all other pages in our teacher manual, you'd refer to maybe once or twice a year, okay? Uh, this document is available in the printable section of your profile when you log in, um, or we would have emailed it to you in your activation email. So with Workbook C, if you look at the left-hand side, you will start off by logging into your own teacher profile. You'll click in the report section of your profile and you're going to generate the sign-in cards for every one of the students in your class. As you can see on the left-hand side here, there is a space for the children to put this sign-in card into it, okay? Also, it's worth noting that you don't need to be displaying the workbooks by just holding them up at the top of the classroom, that each workbook is available in flipping book format. So you'll be able to get it up on your interactive whiteboard and it works exactly like a, exactly like a book. You can flick from page to page so it's important to know you can display it in front of the class all right this is what workbook um, c looks like our contents that are covered inside in workbook c we have 34 units um, pages 4 to 13 give you instructions tips on different area of the program uh, of the program and i'm going to go through those pages with you now units one to six are all practice units it's really important that children have a, a firm foundation on the strategies before they start into their individualized spelling list so that's why we give six practice units it is worth noting, if you are taking on a third class that has been using Spellings for Me in first and second, you could possibly get through units one to six a little bit quicker than six weeks, but that's completely up to you. We have adjudged so that each unit is, is worth a week, is a week's worth of work, but you can get through it a little bit quicker if, I said, if as I said, the class have been using Spellings for Me prior to third class. Uh, from unit seven onwards, all children will use their individualized spelling list generated from their online profile. During, you, during weeks one to six, it's important to note that every time the devices come to you, you could be and should be doing online testing and building up their learning words so that their learning words are ready to go for week seven, okay? This page is of most importance to the children in the class, but also to you as a teacher. The image on the left should be explained to the children at the start of the year. It's on page four of every workbook. The children in your class should be able to know why they are taking these tests. The yellow test, teacher, why am I taking the yellow test? Well, we need to find out what words in English language you do not know. And when we find out what words in English language you don't know, I, as your teacher, I'm going to print those words for you. We're going to cut up those grids and we're going to stick them into your workbook. And you're going to work on four grids for four weeks, 12 words per week. And after studying those 48 words, so it would be 12 words per week over the course of four weeks, after studying those words, you as my teacher are going to unlock the test to see how many of the 48 words I've learned. So that's my orange test that you see there on the left hand side. Let's say I spell 48 out of 48 correct. Brilliant. But now I need more words to build up for the next four weeks. So I go back to my yellow spelling test. So inside in this, we have our assessment for learning with our yellow test. We have our learning taking place where they cut up the four grids, stick them into their workbook and study those four grids for the next four weeks. And then we have our assessment of learning taking place as well. All right. There is a page in the teacher manual in relation to top tips for smaller words. Um, some children, as you're aware, will get smaller two, three letter words, and we give these tips in it. In relation to this, I would urge you to look at the video um, Spellings for Me and Support as well. Um, there's a lot of useful tips for children who attend support and those who might be getting those smaller words. These pages are built into the, in the first few pages of your Spellings for Me workbook. I would urge you as a class teacher to not just brush by this, to go through these pages with your class, to explain to them what strategy has been used to question them. Now at this stage, I hope you're looking at this video and you've already looked at the, the video on the spelling strategies so that you're familiar with them. Or if you haven't, I would urge you to go and look at the video on the spelling strategies. We focus on four main spelling strategies and each one of those strategies is represented in these words here, okay? If you look at the first one, just to give you an example, I'm conscious of the timing of this video. Uh, the first one, the word is quarter. 
the student has found a mini word in the word port or the word is art. So that is the strategy that's being used here. So each one of the strategies has been represented using these 12 examples. But I would question the children, what strategy has been used for word number two, minute? What strategy has been used in word number three, curious? Question them through each word so that they become familiar with, with the strategies, but also uh, how these pages can be useful and they can refer back to them day after day. These are just examples of some of the activities in Workbook C. Um, we introduce new activities from Workbook A work up to Workbook F. Generally, those activities are based upon their maturity levels rather than ability. So they're based upon maturity levels. On the first few pages of the workbook, just so you're aware, there's an online log. If you, if you do decide to assign the online testing for homework, there's an online log where the students can record it. Our creative dictionary is there. And the first few units, there's actually many lessons to explain how to use the creative dictionary for your students. And also, um, we have this page on the right hand side. As you're aware, you go away and you correct English copies or homework copies and you, you might uh, highlight a spelling error in those copies. Uh, the student says, thank you very much. It closes up the workbook and, and they never look back at those words again. If you do do this, there's a, there's, a pay, there's a place in the workbook, there's a page in the workbook where the students can record these errors um, and they may refer back to them at a later date. And this page. So in every workbook, there, this page is in every workbook and it's what strategy should I use? And it's a helpful flowchart for the children to determine which strategy might suit the word that they have. It is of the utmost importance. In the first few weeks, you have your video lessons there in the first two weeks that you play these video lessons for your children so that they become familiar with the strategies and understand how to use them. Just looking at unit one, um, as I said, there's a video lesson that corresponds with it. So if you print your checklist and follow your checklist, you will be told when to play the video lessons. Um, similarly, there's a video lesson for the uh, two, sorry, there's two video lessons uh, in unit one for week one. And when we go into week two, it's the same thing. There are two video lessons again. These video lessons are eight, nine, 10 minutes. I would urge you to spend time speaking about them, talking about them, referring back to them at some at certain stages of the year, because children need to be using these strategies with their words in order for them to become better spellers. This is just an example of um, unit three. So we, we introduce morphology and etymology and we get speaking about these words. Um, and unit four, as I said already, we want to introduce the creative dictionary to the children and how to best use it. Similarly, we want to explain what mistake mapping is to them and so that they could they may possibly use mistake mapping when looking at their words. These activities are based, um, they're not activities, but these are these are explained to you and how to um, use them in your classroom and in the workbook uh, in unit four. And we get to unit five, it's a revision of the strategy. Feel free to play the video lessons again if you feel like it. And unit six, every student in your class gets the same 12 words. Now, just so you know, we envisage it so that it's three words per night. Three words Monday, three words Tuesday, three words Wednesday, and three words Thursday. It is beneficial to do this unit in school, that you can see the prop, that you know children are using the strategies properly, that they're doing their work properly. And if it's your first year of using Spellings for Me, it's probably important to do the first seven, eight, nine, ten units fully in school, if it's their first year, as I said, using the program, because everything is new to them and you want to ensure that they get off on the best possible footing. Remember, if you run it properly in your class for the first year, the fourth class teacher next year will rate the rewards, the fifth class teacher the year after and the sixth class teacher thereafter. These are just some, some of the activities that the students will complete. Um, as, as I said, this is Monday's activity, activity one, Tuesday's activity will be activity two, Wednesday's activity will be activity three and Thursday's activity will be activity four. But when we get to unit seven, that's where the real learning takes place. The individualized lists come into play. So at this stage, you're going to go to your teacher profile and you're going to bulk print the learning words for each one of your 25 students, for example. So that means every student will be ready to go with four grids. And you're going to stick the first grid for every student in here uh, into that first unit. So that's what it looks like. So this is what it looks like for your students. You get your four grids. We recommend printing with the errors, just so you know. Um, It'll work for the majority of your children. Some children with assessments of dyslexia, they may, this may not work. It might be too many letters. There is a disclaimer, just so you know. If you're printing with the errors, you must print in color. The reason being is if you print all of these words in black, they're not going to be able to distinguish between what their error was and the actual word they have to learn. So yes, there is a lesson to take place at the start to explain to the student. If you all look at the very first word there, the word is engage, I-N-G-A-G-E is how I misspelt it. How is it supposed to be spelt? E-N-G-A-G-E. 
look at the second word, U-R-B-O-N is how I misspelled it. How is it supposed to be spelled? U-R-B-A-N. As you can see with a lot of these words here, these are real students' errors. With, as you can see with a lot of these words, there's one or two letters wrong with every word. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot to build on here. So you will print this out for every student and they will stick them into units um, seven, eight, nine, and 10 of their workbook. And they're ready to go then with their individualized spellings for the next four weeks. You, as their teacher, do not need to log in for the next four weeks. The students do not need to log in for the next four weeks. There are, of course, optional lectures they can be doing, but I would urge you to look at the optional lectures video if you want them to be logging in. This is where you print this grid, just so you know. You go to the report section of your profile and you go to the first one there on the long running reports. It's learning words with answers. As I said, if you have 25 students, 25 pages of it will come out ready to go for the next four, four weeks for every student. And it will look exactly like this. OK, they then go and they start unit seven. OK, three words per night, three words Monday, three words Tuesday, three words Wednesday and three words Thursday. As I said, it is beneficial to do even these pages in school at the start of introducing the programme. But the most important thing is that you do this page in school. I would urge you to look at our video, Drop Everything and Spell. Schools that build spellings for me into their daily routine, and some days it's just two minutes, some days it's five minutes, but schools that build it into their daily routine are the schools that reap the rewards. If you look at the first activity, just for example, here's our morphology etymology section of the workbook. It's always on Mondays. But if you get the children to just fill in these kind words at home, kinder, kindest, kind-hearted, and never speak about them, the benefits are lost. This should be a classroom activity. They fill in the words and then you discuss the words and how they relate. So how does some children, some student is going to have an example of using the word kind-hearted, possibly how their grandmother's most kind-hearted woman in the world, an example of this. And then they'll get into another student will come in, come on along and start speaking about examples of kindness. Or maybe somebody will have an example of unkindness from the playground. But then you're getting to look at this word and realize how all of these words are linked. That's Monday's activity. Tuesday's activity, as you can see, is a word ladder. It should be completed during this drop everything and spell as well. Wednesday's activity is fill the gap. And the game is always every second Thursday. As you can see here, the game is Connect Four. OK, so it's really important to know this is not a traditional spell and workbook where all the activities should be sent home for homework. There is a lot of learning to take place here, but the learning can only take place if these activities are discussed in the classroom. OK, the other page can be sent home for homework, as I said, three words per night. But it is important while the students are getting used to it to possibly do it in school. We go into unit eight. We have the next grid and the activities. Free writing is every second week. We go into unit nine. We have the next grid and we have our new activities and we go into unit 10. And at the end of unit 10, after studying those four grids, it's now time for every student to take their learning words test. These are the tests on the 48 words they've been studying for the previous four weeks. When they do this, they will also build up words for the next four weeks and you are going to print out those words and stick them into unit 11, 12, 13 and 14. The cycle begins again, okay? And that is workbook C, covered. Uh, what's in brackets, just so you know, if you look at unit seven, unit eight, what is in brackets there? That is the morphology, etymology theme that we're going to be studying for that week. As you can see, there's a huge emphasis from third class up to sixth class. There's a weekly lesson on morphology or etymology. Most important thing, print your checklist, okay? It's the only document you need to print, okay? Look at the video, possibly drop everything in spell. It will give you great ideas of what you're supposed to do in your classroom in relation to the teaching of spelling. And the other important video for you to look at would be running spellings for me efficiently in your class. Um, all those videos are available to you in the dashboard section of your profile. Thank you very much. Please realize we are there for support at all stages. Info at spellingsforme.ie is our email address or give us a call on 01535 1661. Have a lovely day. Thank you.